This is Fred Beck from Fred Don't Sighting. Today, I'm very lucky to joined by John Morgan. So thank you very much for coming on, John. It's good to see you, mate. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate it. So what's been going on with you, John? What have you been up to, mate? Busy, man. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a blessing and a curse, right? I mean, I live here in Las Vegas, and, and every fight week, it seems, for the USC is in Las Vegas. Of course, we're starting to travel a little bit, you know, for the big pay-per-views. But, you know, week in and week out, we're at the UFC Apex. So staying busy and... Uh, look, now we're about to start the Contender Series as well to get that going again, too. So it's going to be, you know, every Tuesday and Saturday at the UFC Apex. So it's uh, it's busy, man, but that's a good thing. Yeah, I can understand. And so um, at MMA Junkie, how do you decide who's going to go around to the interviews? Because it's normally you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if someone's on site, obviously they're going to handle everything. The rest of it's just all about kind of communication and, and, and seeing who's available to talk to who and, you know, kind of what's going on at the time. So fortunately, man, we're, we, we've got a big site with a big team with a lot of really, you know, talented, capable people. So, uh, you know, we just kind of spread the love around a little bit unless, uh, you know, you're on site, at which point, you know, you, you kind of got to handle that business yourself. Yeah, I can understand. I mean, normally the uh, press conferences. Um. Yeah, so you've been around the game for, I think, I looked on Twitter or Wikipedia, you can't always trust Wikipedia, but it said 2007, and blimey, that was a long, I wasn't even in school in 2007. Um, what can you remember when you're just starting out in the business of reporting and journalism, going to the press conferences, what can you remember about the start of it? Yeah, I mean, dude, it was just an entirely different world back then, you know what I mean? Even, even, even then... You know, it was it was developing into an industry, but you know, think about from that time, and then and then going on to Fox, you know, network television in the United States, and now, uh, you know, ESPN, you know, the the you know the the worldwide leader in sports, as they like to call themselves. So, uh, you know, it's just it's really just been growth, man. It's you know, even at the time I joined, it, it was it was pretty small, you know, it, even though yes, it was starting to get that national recognition and international recognition, it was still very much on the, on the developing side of things, and it's just been fun watching the growth of it, and and not just growth in the United States, but you know, growth around the globe man is 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 you know different nations different audiences start to pay attention to it and start to produce different athletes you know what i mean we're starting to see champions come from from all over the world which, which is incredible so really just you know the difference between then and now man it's just you know thinking about the growth of it basically yeah sorry dogs are just going off in my house i mean someone's at the door got it happens i got five of them here right now so we're we're, we're, we're house sitting for three puppies so we, we got we got a lot going on i can, i gotta feel you Wait, with three puppies, you're getting much sleep then. <laughs> uh, I am. My wife is not. Fortunately, uh, she's the one that volunteered to take on that responsibility. So she's the one that's uh, dealing with it at all hours. Oh, well, that's all right then. You have to wake up early in the morning. So as I was saying earlier, you've been in MMA since 2007 reporting on it. And you must have been to quite a few events. Do you remember some of your most favorite MMA events you had to cover? It's crazy, you know, to sit there and try to, to, try to think about it. But um. You know, listen, I, I always remember, you know, audiences like, uh, you know, at the Bell Center in Canada, uh, in Montreal, for especially for George St. Pierre fights, like those were amazing atmospheres. You know, we talk about favorite events. I mean, heck, there was a, a really good fight night event last week, you know, that was just full of finishes and great fights. And so like those things were, you know, some of your favorite events can be, you know, small fight cards like that, because there's so many good fights. But the things that really stick with you are, are the atmospheres, you know, especially as, you know, as we're going through COVID-19 and had to do a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, fights without fans. You think back to those ones where you had, you know, massive sold out events, you know, but, you know, like I said, the Bell Center in Montreal is always loud. Uh, HSBC down in, down in Rio de Janeiro, man, like the, the audience is there, especially when they first returned back were incredible. Um, you know, getting a chance to see like Alexander Gustafsson fighting in Stockholm. I mean, those were amazing. Conor McGregor in Dublin. I mean, that was a, an amazing atmosphere. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's things like that that really stick out to you, the, the atmospheres and the crowds and, and the feeling around it. Yeah, and uh, it must be crazy. I mean, McGregor won in, uh, in Dublin. That must be really loud. That's after his long layoff. Um, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable, man. It was, it was, you know, it was right as he was starting to burst on the scene, you know, and it was, uh, it was, it was really incredible to see it's small venue, but it was just absolutely packed to the rafters. And, uh, it, it was, it was a special night for sure. I mean, when there's so many fans in the arena, I mean, the energy and noise must get quite crazy. So one of the questions I've seen a lot of people asking is, well, how come you're the first person at every single USC press conference to ask the first question? Why is that? I mean, listen, at this point, it's trying to just become tradition. You know, like you said, I've been in the game for a long time, and that's just kind of been the way. But it started out as something very simple. It just used to be that uh, UFC President Dana White would come to the, to, the, to the press conference and ask who had a question. 
And then there would be this awkward pause as people would raise their hand and PR would try to pass a mic around and get it to people. And like, there were a couple of times when Dana was even like, oh, what, nobody has any questions? It's like, well, no, we're just, we're, we're taking a second to get the microphone. And and so uh, an old buddy of mine, Dave Schaller, who works for the Philadelphia 76ers now, he was like, hey, uh, you know, he worked for USCPR at the time. And he was like, hey, um, would you mind if I just, if, if we just handed you a microphone ahead of time? So when Dana asks, like, who's got the first question, like, you've already got the microphone and, like, there's not that awkward pause. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing that, you know? So it started out as something very mechanical like that. And now it's just kind of, kind of become tradition at this point, I guess. I uh, know there's, on YouTube, there's loads of MMA fan sites where they got a combination of Dana White asking, who's got the first question? And then of you asking the first question. There's <laughs> 10, minute, 10 minute combined videos of the, um, that's funny since you being a journalist i want to get your thoughts on a couple of things we'll start with the biggest star in the sport right now i'd say conor mcgregor in the uk that was the first time normally these events i'd wake up that was the first time i was in my mate's house and luckily he bought the pay-per-view this time because normally i buy it but yeah so we were making jokes about oh imagine there's an eye poke and i got imagine there's an eye poke and the fight got shut off or i mean a leg break then his leg did break i mean a lot of people was looking back at the end and silver leg break and he was never the same fighter after do you think Conor McGregor will come back like Silva, or do you think he'll be like he was before the fight? You know, I, I guess what Conor has going for him is that he's a little bit younger, you know what I mean? So that's a good thing. Um, he's definitely dedicated. I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, you see on his social media and stuff, he's already working out, and, and, and he's vowed to come back. And, man, when that guy vows to do something, it seems like he sticks with it, you know? So um, I, I do think he has the, the capabilities of doing it, but then there's, there's hurdles to overcome, right? Like when you come back physically – um, you, you know, you, you, you could be, I think, more or less the same. In fact, that titanium rod in your, in your leg means that you'll never have to worry about breaking it again. But um, psychologically, you know, uh, how does it feel? Are you able to throw that leg the same way? Are you able to throw that kick out there and not worry at all, not think about it? Even if it's just a, a split second hesitation. I mean, this game is all about timing, right? And if, if you're hesitating even for a little bit, you know, that's that's a big game changer. Physically, um, you know, I've heard that, that that thing may still cause pain. You know, I've heard some people that, that have had that same thing done say that it still causes pain. And so, um, you know, that, that titanium rod in there doesn't necessarily just become like a, a part of your body. It's still in there and it can hurt. So uh, we'll see about that. I've, I also heard a doctor talking the other day um, that mentioned the weight of, of the of the stuff that's in them. You know, like that's actually there's, for what he said. And I don't know if it was accurate or not. I was overhearing a secondhand conversation, but he said it was, you know, a little bit over a pound worth of stuff, uh, you know, for, of material in there. So, um, you know, what does that do? Does that change anything? Who knows? So, uh, you know, if anybody has the capability to do it, it's Conor McGregor. That guy is mentally as tough as they come and, and, and as focused and driven as a person you'll ever meet. But there are physical and psychological hurdles that he's going to have to overcome for, for sure. That's a very good point about the weight there. I, had a, I don't think, I've never seen anything about that at all on Twitter or Instagram. I had a thought about that at all. And what I find quite odd is, I guess a lot of casual MMA fans that do tune in, that's when McGregor gets the most pay, most pay view buys because all the casuals tune in for him. A lot of people say, oh yeah, he wasn't motivated for that fight. But then in that first round, he came out all guns blazing. Um, what are your thoughts? There is a bit of a dark topic, but what are your thoughts on his tweets recently about Khabib's father and that he did delete them, but what are your thoughts on that kind of area i hate him i absolutely hate him if i'm being honest with you I, I think it's over the line i think it's unnecessary i think it's you know any number of things that you want to say i think conor mcgregor is better than that if i'm being honest with you you know i i i don't like to see it you know i don't think there's a reason for it i think you know you should leave family out of things you should leave race and religion out of things i get it it's a trash talk game uh it's an entertainment game uh, it's the fight game, you know, as UFC president Dana White likes to say, people are going to say some not nice things sometimes. And, and I get all that. Um, but, you know, taking a shot at somebody's dead father, to me, that's that's off limits. So um, I, to be honest, I just see no excuse for it. And and I and I hated it. Yeah, I know it wasn't it wasn't great. The was kind of five minute odd about Conor McGregor is the two different personalities when it was Mr. Nice Guy and then Mr. It just seemed a bit forced, the, the trash talk this time. I think Michael Bisping, he's a perfect person. Be an example of a trash talk, the poet trash talker. Um, so you're moving up a few weight classes. You've got the return of Nick Diaz. And I looked at his, the date for his fight, his first fight of Robbie Lawler. And I wasn't even alive then, 17 years ago. That was a while ago. Anyway, it'd be his first fight back in the Octagon, City for Anderson Silva. What are your thoughts on that fight? And do you think it very, is obviously it's on the card of Volkanovski and Brian Ortega, the ultimate fighter finale. Um, what do you think that fight card would get over 400,000 buys on pay per view? 
Well, so, uh, it's tough, man. That's that's tough to say. Uh, you know, th- those are kind of some names that you know, not really big stars yet. You know, when you talk about the titles, now look, they're they're getting the rub from the Ultimate Fighter, so maybe that'll help a little bit. You know, I think that's building the rivalry a little bit more than maybe it was. So. Um, we'll see. We'll see where it stands. But, you know, as far as Nick Diaz, I think it's good to see him back. You know, I mean, uh, the, the guy is pure entertainment, just like his brother Nate Diaz as well. You know, they're both cut from the same cloth, man. They're fun to watch fight. They're going to go out there and scrap. Uh, they're going to put on a show for you every time. You know, they they may not necessarily win, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, if it's not um, another top contender, which I think is, you know, a, a good thing. You know, it's not like going out there and facing a Leon Edwards who's, you know, fighting for a title shot and is right at the top of the game right now. You know, so um, I think it's going to be an entertaining fight. As far as buys, it's, it's always tough for me to predict, man, because I think – especially living inside the bubble and being such a part of it. I see value in matchups. I think that, that some people don't, but um, look, you know, Nick, Nick speaks to the casual fan. That's for sure, man. I mean, he's a name that's been around for a long time and um, you know, he's got, a, he's got a passionate audience that supports him. That's for sure. You think you can get the win? Because I checked the, I checked the odds today and it's probably a 50, 55 matchup. That's the thing. There's just so many question marks, you know, that, and, and I think it's a, it's a 50, 50 fight, you know, it's the fights like that are hard, hard to, to, to break down. You know, it, it, it reminds me a lot in a different way, but like, you know, this past weekend with TJ Dillashaw and Corey Sanhagen, like that to me was a really hard fight to, to lay out what exactly was going to happen. Right. Because we haven't seen a guy for so long, you don't know how they're going to come back. I mean, can you assure that that's the same guy it was five years ago? Like, I, I don't know that you can, you know, in the same way with, you know, with TJ Dillashaw coming back after two and a half years away. You're like, I, I don't know. Is he going to be the same guy? Is he going to have, is he going to, you know, have, missing a step, you know, is he slowed down a little bit, you know, who, who knows? So really, really tough for me to say. And I think, I think the odds kind of accurately reflect what I think about the, 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 you know, the possibilities. It's a 50, 50 fight. You know what I mean? That's, that's the way it feels to me. I know, that's the thing that's so good. I feel that that's the thing that separates boxing from um, from UFC or MMA. It's because of boxing, it's not often you get 50-50 fights. It's quite rare. In UFC, you get 50-50 fights every weekend, so it's great. All right, John, thanks so much for taking the time. Actually, I really appreciate it. And welcome yeah, pl- to social media app. Where can they find your Twitter and Instagram? Yeah, John Morgan MMA on Instagram and MMA Junkie John on uh, on social media. And if, uh, if you like hearing me talk about the MMA, check out the, uh, the MMA Roadshow with John Morgan. Yeah, put that, put the MMA Roadshow in the description. All right, John, thanks so much for your time today, man. That's awesome. You got it. Appreciate it, brother.